The transmission on the FS engine lives underneath this square air filter, underneath the battery, lives way down there. There is no factory recommended service interval for changing this uh, transaxle fluid or transmission fluid, same thing. And what you need for changing it though is fairly straightforward. You need one wrench, not socket, it won't fit, and one bucket. Maybe some rags if you're messy. What you are looking at here in a sec is the oil, transaxle oil drain bolt, and it lives right there. It's somewhat shiny in the middle of the picture and you're looking at it because it's so close to the frame so close to the frame here this is the end of the frame there's no way you can put a socket on this one so we'll go with a wrench like this a 19 millimeter wrench would be delightful or three quarters of an inch in this case I'm going with this crescent wrench so the operation here is fairly straightforward. Let me just grab the wrench. Because now both the camera and, and the wrench need to fit. I'm holding everything. There. I have drained this oil before, so this is more like a show and tell. So we're not going to have a spectacular spill and uh, we're not going to flood the camera with transmission fluid. I drained it two days ago, so there is still a little bit in it. There. Because the vehicle's, vehicle was shifted on on the jacks so let's wait a few minutes until every last remainder drips out and we'll take a look at it all right let's go in from the front now this time so that's where the bolt has been removed from it's still dripping very slowly the manufacturer recommends that this washer the bolt comes with be replaced to ensure the bolt head seals properly against the aluminum case or the uh, or the oil pan of the transaxle. I'm gonna put the same washer back on. If it leaks I replace it. Do make sure that you don't cross thread this. And hand turn it in now the recommended torque without a socket fitting on it, look at it. Between the bolt head and the frame I can only place my finger and it's not particularly chubby either. So that's all the space, all the physical space around this bolt. So good luck setting it to the recommended torque. I do have a number for it though, I'll show you in a sec. So the tightening torque is listed there in newton meters, kilogram force and foot pounds. Now, when you have the transaxle fluid removed, do take a look. What you're looking at two things. First off, you're looking at color. This is the old transaxle fluid which is mostly black, remotely red, and by contrast, here is the fresh one cherry red and you can see through it you can see my finger through it even through the glass and whatever okay so if it's this black it's high time to replace it a second thing other than color what you're looking for is do smell it seriously it shouldn't have a burnt smell I can't have smell on the camera but it shouldn't have a stink that uh, smells like burnt if it's just stinky as transaxle fluid, that's okay. 
The third thing you're looking for is sediment, especially metal shrapnel. That's why I wanted to take out the last little bit from the transaxle case so I can have any, any sediment. I can catch it here in the bucket and that's basically that's basically all I have microscopic amounts of little dirt and we're basically in good shape there's no metal chunks in it that would be a problem so this is what the service manual has to say about the color those are all the color variations and that's what causes them we are normal and discoloration by oxidation a natural process that affects all oils and fats and greases so that's uh, that's all there is to it about in the service manual and on a previous page yeah that's uh, this is how much quantity of transaxial fluid we're gonna fill in in liters US quartz and imperial quartz and uh, if you have a manual transaxle then your numbers are quite different there manual transaxle transaxle oil so you're gonna have the same numbers in in the same order liters US quartz and imperial quartz there those are your numbers 2.68, 2.83, 2.36 and that's the viscosity above it alright, that's enough of the manual service manual and I forgot to mention yeah, this one is an automatic transaxle by now I have removed the battery so uh, that's, uh, that's the change that you see there and you're only really supposed to work on this thing with the engine cold and of course at room temperature cold the dipstick also says multi vehicle MV type transaxle fluid is going in and there's the box ATF multi vehicle and the word Dexon Dextron tree is somewhere mentioned on this one thereabouts as well so this is the kind that is needed for this vehicle what you need is remove the dipstick which was there and replace it with a long funnel and carefully and slowly fill in the required amount checking it with your dipstick the dipstick is a little bit interesting here it's got four notches instead of two notches there are 20 cells use notches on the bottom edge and 65 degree notches on the top edge yeah this is metric yeah no Fahrenheit sorry that's how this one comes so the higher mark on the lower edge is the maximum amount for the room temperature engine and the lower notch on the bottom edge is the minimum amount at room temperature 65 degrees would be its normal operating temperature and when the engine is warm fluids expand so when the engine is warm the upper notch along the top edge is the maximum amount and this notch here the lower notch along the top edge is the lower amount all right that's how these notches work on this dipstick and uh, all I need to do is fill in the required amount we're good to go Finally, we have a situation with the numbers here on this transaxle fluid change. I, pull, I poured in the entire can, 3.78 no, liters or one gallon, US gallon that is. And it's already overfilling the transaxle case. You can see the film on it. Let me just get the camera there. You can see the film glistening on it. It's it's above and beyond all of the notches, okay? And if I wipe it off, the engine is warm, so the transaxial fluid is runny or drippy, whichever way you look at it. And, uh, if I do it again, you'll see that it's way past there. 
way past maximum fill there let me just get the camera there the top notch would be there and the top of the film is somewhere there way above the top no top notch there so the engine is nice and warm it's at 65 degrees celsius I don't know what the other side say. Nothing. It doesn't have Fahrenheit on it. So anyhow, that's 65 degrees Celsius. This would be the notch for maximum as as fluids expand when warm. So that would be the maximum fill, and that would be the minimum fill at at 65 degrees. And you can see from the height of the film there that goes about a centimeter or whatever. It goes there where my nail is so bottom line uh, this quantity is too much okay and if I and if I pour in more it's not gonna get any better I need to take some out to get it to the required level but the manual says this is a page from the service manual that we've looked at before that I need automatic transaxial fluid the first number will be liters that I need seven liters so this one is 3.8 so I need two cans not happening so some of these numbers something is wrong with these numbers I don't need seven liters I need even 3.8 is too much and also this many gallons this doesn't fit physically the transmission case so I'm gonna take some out get the wrench and uh, we'll uh, see how much actually I, I take out to get the level at the right height all right just hang in there so I've taken this much of the transmission fluid out the height is there that's close to the 900 milliliter mark so let's do the math 900 milliliters is 0 0.9 liters so in went 3.78 minus the 0 0.9 is uh, 2.88 liters roughly is what's left in the transmission case minus the spillage so it's a little less than 2.88 that number sets the height just about right if I check it with the dipstick on a warm engine it's still got some residual heat in it it ran about an hour ago and we've got a height that's just right on this film there you can see that the height is between the maximum and the minimum notches along the top edge here along the where the 60 where the warm engine temperature notches are made so it's right between the max the maximum and the minimum there flawless flawless lastly these numbers and that uh, we ended up with this 2.88 liters are very similar to yeah totally different from what we have here in uh, on this page of the manual but not so different from the figures that we have from the figures that we have on this page for the manual transaxle type there manual transaxle and if I look at the capacities 2.68 2.68 liters so I say the correct amount that you need is about 2.68 liters let's round it up to 2.7 whatever you get the idea so don't fill in the whole can you don't need it all you're gonna have to watch it that you only pour in 2.7 liters so there you have it